We're now going to talk about the topic of tidy data and the corresponding R package that's associated with it. I'm never quite sure how you're supposed to pronounce these things, but I would say the tidy R package that is associated with tidy data. Tidy data is really a buzzword, and I'm always a little turned off by buzzwords. It's one that was made up, as far as I can tell, by Hadley Wickham. We've mentioned his name several times in this video series because he's one of the foremost developers of R. He's a creator of R Studio, but he's also sort of one of the intellectuals behind the conceptual basis of how R has developed over time. So the entire suite of packages that are known as Tidyverse are based around organizing your data in this way called tidy data. And tidy data has a, a lot of uh, different features you could talk about. If you want to learn more about the philosophy of tidy data, you can go to the R for Data Science website and look at the section on tidy data. But you could also summarize tidy data uh, pretty succinctly by, by applying three basic rules. The first rule is that each variable should be in its own column. The second rule is that each observation should have its own row. And the third is that each value should have its own cell. So let's go back and take a look at the cockroach experiment and see what that would look like with respect to tidy data. So first of all, if we say that each variable should be in its own column, then we need to decide what are the variables in the experiment. Well, as we said, the color is obviously one variable that I'm manipulating in the experiment. And so you can see here is a column in the table for color. Block, which is another uh, factor in the experiment, gets its own column here. And then the response variable, which is essentially the data that I am going to record, is given in a particular column here, which I've called the response column. Each of these three variables, the two independent variables that I'm controlling, and then the dependent variable that I'm measuring, each gets its own column. And you can see then that each of the observations that I make represents a, a combination of these three variables. So you have a combination of a block, which is a particular cockroach in a particular box, and a color, and then the response for that cockroach and that color. And then here's uh, the same box, but with a different color, and here's the response. Here's the same box with red, and here's another response. And then we move on to the B combination of cockroach and box with blue light and so on. So each of the observations that involves a particular measurement and the factors that determine its uh, state are put into a separate row. So this is the, an example of how we should organize the data if it were tidy. Although using the buzzword tidy data is a fairly recent thing, this format is actually not new. Statistical software has required it for many years. In that case, the, uh, the system of organizing factors in columns rather than mixing them in rows and columns, um, we always called grouping variables because the software essentially uses the columns of grouping variables in order to group the data in various ways when you're doing an analysis on them. However, tidy data is a pretty handy term for this kind of format. It, it very succinctly encapsulates the ideas that I've gone over here. So we'll go ahead and use it even if it is a buzzword.